Hi guys, and welcome back to another demo with Man and Machine. I'm Francisco Perez Smith, mechanical engineer and FEA monstrosity. Today, we're going to continue our series on Nastran INCAD, having a look at normal modes. In engineering, normal modes are more or less a fancy way of talking about when and how a system will resonate or vibrate violently. For any given system, there are a set of frequencies called the natural or resonant frequencies at which the whole system will resonate. Sometimes, these mean practically nothing. Other times, failure to account for them can result in instability, loss of function, premature fatigue, or even catastrophic failure. Let's consider the example of a simple medicine cabinet. If a cabinet is mounted on the wall of your bathroom, you might not care at all about its natural frequencies. Your house is stable, so you could be reasonably expected to not vibrate. However, what would happen if you put the same cabinet mounted inside an ambulance helicopter? Suddenly, it's subject to the vibrations of the helicopter's fuselage. If the natural frequency of the cabinet happens to correspond to the vibration of the helicopter, then the cabinet would resonate. This would cause it to shake violently, possibly expel its contents, or even fall apart. Definitely not ideal for an emergency situation. So if we had to redesign this cabinet for use in a helicopter, we might want to alter it so that its natural frequencies are very different from the operational frequencies of the helicopter. One last thing before we begin. Normal modes explore not only at what frequencies resonance occur, but also in what manner it occurs. At a particular frequency, a system will vibrate in a particular way. This is called the normal mode, and its shape can often be key to refining the design. Wonderful! Okay, let's have a practical example of normal modes analysis in NAS training CAD. In this example, we're going to have a look at a simple arm, analyze it for its normal modes, and see how we can improve its vibrational characteristics. Let's get to it! Okay, here we have a simple design for an arm. It's going to be fixed via this face on the wall, come out horizontally, and ordinarily a load would hang off this pin connection here. Now, we may be interested in the vibrational characteristics of this arm. It may be mounted inside something that shakes a lot like a helicopter, and so it might be very, very important that it can't shake below 400 hertz. So what we're going to do is run this design through the NAS trans solver and see when it will shake and in what way. Once we've done that, we're going to make some changes to the design and see how those changes um, affect the, the normal modes. So to get started, we're going to go up to Environments and click Nastran InCAD. Okay, by default, Nastran defaults to the linear static mode of analysis. So what we're going to do is right click here and say Edit and change the analysis type from linear static to normal modes. From here, it's a lot simpler than it is usually. We're just going to set our constraints. So we'll fix that wall there. And an interesting characteristic about normal modes is that they're largely unaffected by material and by load cases. So we are pretty much good to go once we set a mesh on this. So we'll click Generate Mesh. And now we can click Run. So the solution usually comes pretty quickly. Now, if we want to have a look at the results, we'll go up to the Results panel here and click Deformed. And up the top here, the combo box, we can see the modes. So here we see modes 1 through 10. And right next to each of them, can you see here, we've got frequency equals 103 hertz, frequency equals 354 hertz. These are each of the modes. So the first natural frequency occurs at 103 hertz. And uh, in order to have a look at it, we'll select that mode and then we'll click Animate. So this shows us the way in which it vibrates. As you'd expect, because it's a long arm, cantilevered along like that, it doesn't have a reinforcement here. So naturally, it wants to vibrate along there first. So we'll untick Animate and then Oops, we'll click Deformed again, and we'll change the mode to Mode 2. And we will click Animate. So the second way that it's likely to vibrate is sideways in that way at 354 hertz. Now, if you remember, our design goal was to have this to have no natural frequencies below 400 hertz. So what we're going to do is make some changes to the design and see how they affect those normal modes. We'll click Finish Autodesk NAS Training Kit. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add in a prop. Here's one I prepared earlier. This should allow it to withstand not only more force in the downwards direction, but also uh, not vibrate so readily. So we'll go back to Environments, 
NAS training card. And because we've made a change to the geometry, we have to recompute the mesh. All we have to do for that is to click generate mesh. And then we can run this over again. Perfect. Okay, so we'll have a look at the results again, deformed. And now we see the mode one, the first um, resonance now occurs at 375 hertz, so a lot higher than 100 hertz. We're gonna click that and we'll see animate. So from the solver, we'll see that it's more likely to uh, vibrate laterally this time rather than um, vertically because we've added in that prop. Unfortunately, that is still at 375 hertz, so we might need to make some further changes to the geometry to prevent it from uh, vibrating at such a low frequency. Let's have a look at mode two. This is now our vertical uh, mode of vibration, and as you can see, it's changed dramatically on account of the prop being there. It also occurs at 500 hertz, which is well within our range. Okay, we'll click animate there, and we will make one final change to the geometry. We're gonna add in some ribbing on the side. This should help some of its lateral vibration char characteristics. So we'll go back to our straining cut, and we're going to recompute the mesh, and we'll set the solver to run one more time. And now we'll have a look at the results. Success! We can see that the first mode of vibration occurs now at 452 hertz, which is uh, above the 400 hertz that we specified for failure. So what we'll do is click mode one and we'll click animate. We can see that the, uh, the bracket will still vibrate side to side, but because of the ribbing, it requires a higher frequency in order to get it to vibrate like that. We'll have a look at the second mode now and see that it's largely unchanged, 473 hertz. And we'll animate that to have a look. All right, we hope you enjoyed our guide to normal modes analysis in NAS Train NCAD. As always, like and subscribe if you'd like to learn more and be sure to tune in for the rest of our series on FEA. Thanks for watching and happy engineering.